Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, back with uh, another A4000 or A3000 related video. It's the CPU card from uh, A4000. This came from Stefan, so it's uh, just for me to have a look at. I offered to have a look at it, he couldn't get it working. Uh, I think one of the caps is missing, yeah, that one there. But uh, apparently, this is not working and it has him perplexed. Yeah, I'm going to just check that via there, just to make sure there's not like a trace missing that's essential. But I have just tested this, and it sort of boots, but just gives a black screen, you know, like a dark grey screen. It's like it fails somewhere early on in the boot process. Could be one of these. I think Stefan's replaced that. I've had another look round everywhere. I can't really see anything obvious. Looks a bit dull round here, so yeah, that's a candidate for uh, a little bit of vinegar and clean up there. So I'll get this in there. Clocks are set to internal, internal on the motherboard, the two jumpers. I'll probably show you others in a minute, but I've covered them so many times when I've had cards in and out of this in different videos. All right, that's it. So that's just to carefully push it down. The chassis is uh, earthed here, by the way, so yeah, normally I'd have the wrist strap on, and I will put that on before I remove it. All right, let's switch it on. So that's interesting. Yeah, the fact we've got a yellow screen shows there is definitely some issue going on with that board. But you've kind of got the, the dark background there, which shows you that it's gone off the mark. It did actually do something. I'm trying to see if I can get that yellow screen again. No, very strange. Right, so as you can see, it's not working. So let's, uh, let's get it on here, move mine out of the way. Uh, let's just have a, a clean just for good measure really so we'll clean around here with uh, a bit of vinegar first just because those just look awful I mean, uh, there's nothing coming off there so he's, he's probably already cleaned this they do look dull though so hmm not really any different with vinegar there it could be a via near the cap you know there's one or two down here that I don't know, maybe it could be affected, but that doesn't seem to be the issue. There's literally nothing come off that. It is very clean. Right, so it's just the same. Uh, I've got a theory though. It's gonna be something simple. It's gonna be an Occam's razor, isn't it? Now bear in mind this has been off, but the solder points look really good. I think Stefan's done a good job of replacing that. And I don't think the behavior is any different so I'm going to remove this. The reason being is, can you see this wire here? And it's kind of like toasted with corrosion. So let's say this, I don't know, it could be one of the other ones though. I'm just going to get it off anyway, I think. Well, I'll tell you what, before we get it off, let's just measure. Because that's the thing, it's just going to be across 5 volts and ground. Um, so it's a good idea just to test these and give it a bit of peace of mind that there's uh, nothing crazy going on with uh, one of the uh, vines around these. Yeah, so I'm testing the side with the band. They're joined. Yeah, that one on the end's not. And this is the thing you see because you may find that, say, one of these here may derive its power from this area of the board here. And this is the thing, so you can end up with no uh, ground or no VCC or something like those to join. Yeah, but the one over here isn't. So we've got no ground over here. Now it might be just that cap's not on the ground, but uh, anyway, let's just do the positives. Let's, let's just check that's right, so it's that one there. See, they aren't joined either. They are if you press sort of a funny orientation. Yeah, now there is. So that wire that's hanging out there is not on that wire. So that's uh, an immediate problem. Let's just test from this one, because this one seems to have its pad. So on the positive side, let's do the positive side over there. Yeah, that one's joined. But as I say, the grounds... Nope. Interestingly, there's no joint there either, unless that's the ground. Now, there's some weird stuff going on, on this board. I think we've got a broken ground 
plane and it's probably going to be one of these caps here so the camcorder cut out there I carefully removed this cap yeah and what we've got here is I think somebody has put a wire you know some kind of through here because there was a pad missing and uh, yeah I've so resoldered on the other side but I've also soldered another kind of uh, through another piece of kind of through there and pulled it onto the pad again that's on the bottom side now if you look at these can you see they look swollen in the light yeah you can see even though there's a bit of flux there they're swollen the corrosion's got in there so this could be where layers have separated around the power and the ground so hopefully that may join something back up we may need to do the same with the other caps let's just test now uh, so forget which one's which here that one goes there well, that's correct and that one should go there and that goes there so that wasn't there a minute ago and that wasn't there a minute ago which uh, may seem like that's not an issue but what you don't know is the point where this joins the uh, uh, VCC rail on the ground what here pulls from that it could be some of these components up here it could even be this this might be right next to that that might be nothing to do with it um, so anyway that's uh, one down so I've got to try and get this right way around now I'm gonna... so the band I always forget this oh hang on I can look at the shape of the can yeah if you look at the shape of the can you can't really go wrong so yeah the band wants to be at the bottom down here it's gonna be a bit fiddly I'm trying to get this into position for sure let's just uh, get some solder on there and then if we just uh, sit it like that bear in mind we've only got one of the proper paths here so yeah a little bit of uh, manipulation is going to be required to try and get that in position yeah and then we need to join it to that uh, piece of kind of there which I, I don't think I can see actually Is that joined? I don't really know what's going on down there. Yeah, there's a little bead of solder there, look. So, yeah. I'll just inspect with magnification. That side there should go to that side. Yeah, that side should go to that side. Yeah, and I think it does. Yeah, it does. Uh, so, alright, let's just continue along here now. So, one side of this should go there. Yeah, that one goes there. Then the other side goes up here, I think, to that. Yeah, that's correct. And then I guess the final thing is just test between here and here. If we've got those. Got that one. I can't see where that trace goes now. Yeah, so we've got the same problem over here. So this one, uh, again, needs to come off. So let's just use a little bit of uh, braid here to just wick this up. And that's probably almost off. I'm not really sure how much of the pad on this side is still in existence there. It smells uh, very electrolyte if I'm honest. Now you could use the two iron technique that I've shown on the uh, CD32 uh, recap that I did there. That is quite an easy way to get caps like this off. Hot air, obviously. We may need use hot air if I just can't get this off now. Let's just see i just don't understand why this side here there's just nothing there it's like well over this side may need to use some hot air to get that off i think let's just see if we can uh, gently uh, pull this oh there we go yeah lift that side off i think there's a wire or something here on this side because yeah it feels floaty yeah there is look yeah so it's another one of these with a bit of wire so yeah, it's the same thing. It's soldered on here, look. But for whatever reason, it's not joining properly, so I just need to redo that. And this may not make any difference whatsoever, but it's the simple stuff that we just got to rule out as part of the process here. It could have just been that first cap. You can see there's a bit of dirt coming off there, but bear in mind we've just some solder there. So it may just be that. And of course the next thing are these wires that are next to the area where the caps have leaked. Because it's a similar thing, you know, if you get a broken trace here, some critical signal may not go where it needs to go on the board. These two up here are a good candidate for that actually, and one or two of these here. Yeah, just from a quick measure there, let me show you what I found. So, uh, hang on, 
one of these pads up here, I think it's that one, is yeah, that's the connection one. So it's that one there goes to that point on the cab there. And this one here, look, nothing on the pad, nothing on the wire. Yeah, so on the wire we've got a short on the pad. <laughs> we haven't. So that's a problem there. But that's probably not causing the issue, which means this cap isn't in uh, series, isn't it really? It's not connected up. Anyway, I'll get a piece of can off through that one there onto that pad and get that cap back on. Right, a few minutes later, I think I've worked out the problem. So I, I inspected around the CPU and everything. They've tested the power rails, also tested from the, uh, the 74 series to make sure they had the ground and the 5 volts with respect to these capacitors here and the power rail they're on, the 5 volt line. Um, the uh, problem, let me show you, it's a 1 ohm resistor. So this is a working board, that resistor there at the edge. Uh, hang on. Yeah, 1.8 ohms, it's 1 ohm. Uh, uh, this one, uh, funnily enough, this was the first resistor I tested. I thought I'll start top left here, and the resistor, I'm like, ah, it's open circuit. There you go, and I've pressed pretty hard on the contacts. Ohm line, oh well. So, yeah, that's it, that's probably going to be the problem. Because that's going to like, like a fuse, when you get really low resistors, uh, you know, low resistance resistors like that, you don't need much of a change in the current draw to make that go nuclear. Um, big, it pop, you know, it's gone, it's like a fuse. And that's probably what it's doing, it's probably on the 5 volt rail or something. It could be on a clock or something and maybe some something was shorted or, I don't know, anything could have caused that really. Um, so yeah, I bet that's what it is. Let's just remove it, I'm just going to bridge it with a bit of wire and then I'll go find a suitable replacement resistor. But my guess is that is what is wrong with this, actually. It'd make more sense if it was on a clock. I mean, if it's on a 5 volt rail, I don't know, something else could have gone bad because it doesn't like the fact that that power rail is missing. Let's just move that out of the way. So, yeah, the other clue as well, The reason, another reason to start up here, if I'm honest, edges. Start around edges of board. Again, Occam's razor. Simple and explanation should be the most likely. That could have just been fractured. We can have a look at it in a minute. It might have even broken in two. But uh, things near the edge of a board will get knocked far, far, far easier than things in the middle of a board. Um, and capacitors and resistors like that, little uh, SMD types, trust me, uh, this is just for temp testing purposes. If this was anything else other than what it is, I wouldn't be swapping it out with a bit of wire. But I have every confidence that the this part of the circuit here, it's not going to be a big deal. Right, so let's just go try that. I'm guessing this is now going to work. So you never know, we may get some smoke here now. <laughs> this may go up, I don't know. Let's just uh, watch the LED. Yeah, it's still not working, I don't think. So I think the next course of action is to just trace where that goes, actually. So still not getting anywhere. The next thing I've just spotted, can you see this? particle of solder it's on a wire but it's on the trace it's on the trace next to it and when you get things like that you get inductive coupling so well, that could be why sometimes it gives a yellow screen let's just uh, touch that with the iron I think just get that off let me just inspect make sure that's gone Right, so uh, next obvious thing, let's just ultrasonic it, why not, it'll all take a minute, uh, I'll dry it off and we'll give it another try. Just because there's contaminants on the board a little bit, maybe some electrolytes got somewhere stupid between two wires or something, I don't know, it's, uh, it's worth it. Because sometimes we get a yellow screen, but it could be one of those uh, 274 series. It could be a faulty CPU, but I think Stefan said he swapped that. So, yeah, my next course of action, I mean, I've checked everything else on there, all the wires look all right. Connectivity is good with the caps now, that little bit of coupling's gone. The one ohm resistor that's uh, balked has been replaced with a bit of wire. I will swap that for a proper one ohm later. Um, I also tested connectivity from that one ohm to see where it goes. It goes to like the second pin down on the right side here of the CPU from the top right, and it goes to the slot. So it's not like there's a bulk trace in relation to that. That's something you should consider. So I switch it on, and uh, yeah, let's just uh, oh, switch the heater off. Just give it a minute. So this is one of these where I can't really uh, scope or probe anything. 
I've not really done any connectivity around that uh, 38 there, but I'm going to swap it anyway. And I think the 174 here is for the FPU. I don't know what this is. I don't see it. It's not even on the schematics. Um, and bear in mind the you know recreated partial schematics. I'm going to swap it out anyway. I've got a spare, so uh, let's just rule it out. It's easier than removing that. Yeah, uh, and I can't see how that could cause a problem. Although I'll revisit the schematics in a minute and just confirm that there isn't a chance that that could be cause a problem. I've got three layers of uh, Captain tape around there. Get a little bit of flux on there. Not a lot. It's just going to burn straight off anyway. But just a tiny little bit will help. And uh, yeah, let's get that off. I will just support this uh, off there. And yeah, let's just try and get it off. So I'm going to come in from the side like that and just get a wee bit of leverage, not a lot. An easy way of getting this off would be some uh, chip quick, you know, uh, low melting point solder. Well, not necessarily just chip quick, but yeah, low melting point solder. Come on. Yeah, this is the problem with not lifting and uh, sliding. And of course you may join up to uh, a pad or something if you're not careful. Anyway, I just need to inspect around there because obviously I did uh, slide that across here. Uh, anyway, that's off. Let's just uh, put that in there. It probably isn't that. I think there's like a 20% chance it's that. I actually think it's this. I think it's going to have maybe some corrosion under there that I can't see. But everything else on this checks out unless there's like something wrong underneath here. Like actually under the cal connector. So I don't know. It's a bit weird on this, but my suspicions are that actually. Uh, I think it could be like a bulk to dress line or something like that on it, maybe. Which is interesting because the dip ones we were talking about this on uh, Discord the other day. They, they don't die, do they? They're like bulletproof. They're absolutely bulletproof. So yeah, here's our uh, new one. I'll just uh, clean up the pads there. I think first. I'm just going to leave that capture tape in place while I solder it and then this... Uh, well actually I could remove it. I was going to say while I'm soldering it might just help me protect it but you know what? I don't really need that there. It's amazing how many things I've got on the go here at the moment actually. I've got like several projects on the go. So I've got bits everywhere, CBLDs everywhere, parts everywhere. Um, some of that is the 3640 stuff I've been doing which has uh, yeah, not been going according to plan. Seems like everything I did with the 4000 recently doesn't go quite the way I want it to. Stuff that should be like simple build turns into a nightmare build. Anyway, you'll see the videos for those. And I'm sure I'll be ranting about them when I'm doing them. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, and no damage there. Nothing, you know, when I dragged that chip off, I didn't touch anything, didn't smear anything. The socket is uh, perfect there. So, yeah, we'll just sort of get that into, connect, into position. Then one is here, on this side. Yeah, let's try and get that nice and straight. <laughs> Easier said than done. So that's fairly straight. And uh, yeah, I'll do my usual sort of come in and uh, get onto the pad. <sighs> Far easier with magnification. Eat for a second or so, just add copious amounts of solder. You can see that's pinned. So then I can just uh, rotate that around. Again, I come down here, touch the pad, copious amounts of solder. There we go, during the second and the first pin then. Uh, get some flux around it. It's lasted ages, this uh, tube from Sparks. I've got some more, but I'm not sure I've got exactly the same one. This is the NC, I think it is, 191. I really want to get some more of that. So this isn't the right uh, tip for drag soldering, but what we can do with this is just uh, you know a bit of bobbing in. And bobbing out like that. I mean, technically, you could say that's drag soldering. <laughs> I'm just dragging up and down instead of sideways. Yeah, so that's that side done. Uh, let's uh, now try uh, this side. Just have a slide up that way. Yeah, there we go, actually. Not too bad. Just a bit of a strange shape there. Oh, 
Right, that's it. So we'll just uh, inspect around that, clean it, and go and try it. But I honestly think that that is not going to have any effect at all. Because, uh, I mean, I forget what an F38 is. It's something like an AND gate or something, isn't it? I can't remember. Um, I suspect it's just going to be some FPU related. These two, I think, are going to be FPU. But it doesn't appear on the schematics from what I could see. I could just be blind. They may have abbreviated, not put the component on there, just put a gate symbol or something like that. So, I don't know. In any case, it's uh, it's easier than swapping out the CPU, and that might be our next uh, course of action. So the A3640 is in there at the moment, so we need to take that out <sighs> carefully. This one's Andy Tricklebanks, actually. It's one of those projects that's uh, delayed. So let's just uh, change the jumpers to the left-hand side, both to the left, which means uh, it uh, you know feeds the motherboard clocks to this rather than the CPU card providing its own CPU and 90 degree phase shifted clock for the motherboard. Right, there we go. Let's see if that's any different. So the key here is the hard disk LED. Nope. That ain't booting. So I think it's the CPU. I think it's got a dead CPU. Just like lukewarm. There's nothing else, I don't know. You know, other than some sort of connectivity problem that I can't see. I can't see what it could be. I mean, I guess what I should do really is just inspect really thoroughly just in case one trace is burned out or something somewhere. I mean, this had, which is why we got, uh, or something was knocked off there, wasn't it? It was a component that was uh, open circuit. Right, just the same. So uh, I'm going to take off the CPU. I mean, technically, I say an input on that was balked, short to ground the VCC. It could be causing a problem where it's giving us the yellow screen, but that's what's happening. You know, I hear the ding from the SID card there indicating there is a reset, it's coming out of reset. And then it's like 10% of the time we'll get yellow screen and then it'll reset black screen. Just doesn't boot, you know, a boot fail. So, yeah, I think it probably is the CPU. Now, if you saw a previous video, stick a link up there, I've got one of these where I removed the original CPU off it, and I put one on there that's got an MMU, so I've got my original one, which I was keeping as a spare, so yeah, I can use it for this. It may just uh, get this uh, up and running again. If it does, I'll uh, offer it to Stefan. Um, he did say I could keep it, but I'll offer it to him if he wants it back, and um, I'm quite happy to ship it back to him. Because I need to ship his SID card, actually. I built him a SID card. Uh, just as a gift, really, to say thanks for some of the things he's been sending me. Now, there's a bit of flux still around here, so I'm not adding any more. I did wipe off the excess, and I just reflowed those two sides there, incidentally. So, uh, anyway, yeah, we just need to, I don't know, come in from down here. Like that. Just get a little bit... It's not easy to work with this. A little bit of leverage. Under there, at an angle like that, that's it. So I'm just pressing really gently here and we'll just heat around this. Get the solder points nice and shiny. quite amazed if we don't lose any pads on this to be honest so I'm just pushing slightly now push slightly yeah I'm sorry if you're going off camera there so yeah it's coming up now it's very hard to film this like I said clamp or vice would be super helpful when you're trying to remove something like this there you go Almost there. Stuck somewhere here. Right, let's just put that over there. That's it. Yeah, so I did make that look incredibly hard, and I'll be honest, it was uh, 
it was a bit difficult. So you can see down here, they're looking a bit dirty, aren't they? Maybe we did have some corrosion on the back side of these, and despite being reflowed, maybe that was the issue. A bit dirty on that side. A little bit here, maybe. Anyway, we'll get a new one on, I think. I can just inspect the inside of those as well there now, I guess. Yeah, so I've just been uh, mopping up the uh, solder here. They were very green down here. Green all around, really. Not so bad on the top side. That's pretty clean. Yeah, so I thought that was going to take uh, ages to find, but uh, luckily it was right at the top there in, in the SD bag. So you can see the way I did this, I taped it to this piece of card here, which is how the original came to me. Not the best way of storing and shit like this. Just carefully pull that. So I'm not sure how straight the pins were when I removed this. I think they were. You can tell that it looks pretty flat. So uh, the notch is here, there's a little indent there on the silk screen, so it's going to go uh, that way, around, hang on, go on something there then. So I just need to just get that in position, inspect, just make sure none of the pins are bent, be right back. Right, that sat into position really, really easily there, it took me all about one second to get that aligned perfectly on all four sides. Now the difficulty, the path's so uh, close to the edge of the chip here in terms of the pins, I've got to literally touch the PCB and not the pad and then just flow crazy crazy solder come on join oh. you can see I get it on that blob there, whatever that is up there let's, let's try this corner here there we go uh, I'll do the same thing up here. Well, just inspect to make sure that's straight. And that was uh, not bad doing it from a distance without magnification. Because I can just see what you can see, but I'm just doing it from, you know, like I say, quite a long way away. So, hopefully, got enough flux in this tube left just to get this on there. Let's just uh, add some more solder here. Now I will drag around this in a minute. I just want to just bob in and out a little bit. You can see it's going on the pins and not on the board. I think I'm going to go and get the Antex onto the job. Right, let's uh, have a clean around there and I can inspect it. But yeah, it's looking alright actually. Right, here we go, all cleaned up. I will put it in the ultrasonic in a minute, but it's, you know, it's had a clear clean and dry with a brush. Get that in there. We've got the LED. Hey, Spoon. There we go. It was a Borg CPU. Yeah, that error is to be expected because this has got MMU libs on here. It's not got an MMU, so you got a uh, fail code there on that. So holding both mouse buttons down with this version of Kickstart, you know, or two one once, I can uh, edit the you know boot up without any configuration. Skip the startup sequence, went into S, and then I did Ed startup sequence, and here we are. I've just commented out, uh, hang on, we want to leave set patch. It's that uh, new fast run. There we go. Just copy that out. I reckon that will probably boot, escape queue, and is it reboot? Yeah, let's give that a try. 
first, hitting the IDE. We may get another error, it may even just hang with a black screen because of the some of the stuff on here, the lids for the 040 and 067. Now look, it's booted up. Hey, hey, fantastic. So there we go, that 030 board is fixed. I'll probably just leave that playing some SID files through that actually, just to test it, and I'll test some games as well. There we go, so it's working. Sweet. I think I might measure around that 030, the old one. Just see if I can uh, work out if any of the pins are, I don't know, short, nearer to ground or VCC than they should be. Maybe the address bus. Yeah, that is working. Brilliant. So whilst I'm here, before we ultrasonic it, I'll replace that bit of wire there with a 1 ohm resistor, which is what should be fitted, and I'm going to fit the FPU socket here. Uh, I'm not going to fit a crystal at this stage, we'll just use the, uh, you know, whatever the motherboard uh, clock speed is for the frequency there. I only took the base out because I'm not going to be able to solder without melting the thing, so yeah, I'll just cut this base off and then I'll you know, just put a bit of Yoohoo there and glue the base back in just to help the chip stand up a little bit in the socket. Um, yeah, we may as well, why not, and then it's got an FPU as well. It's a case of just getting in with uh, some sharp snips. So I've got it in position, uh, the slice is here, anchored it there, anchored it there. Uh, and obviously, like I said, the little struts, so I cut from whichever side is the easiest to get to the little struts, but then the struts are still there, and then it's a case of using a tool like this, and you find the little strut push. They snap off really easily. Certainly on a cheap socket like this, so this is not going to be as good as one of the original ones that was fitted. It's not going to be as structurally uh, secure, but by the time we've glued that base in there, I'll cut those little bits off as well, um, it will hold it up and uh, it'll be okay. It'll be fine. It's, it's not like you take your chips in and out, in and out, in and out. That's where the structural stability would be a problem. And the easy way to solder this is just get loads of flux in here. So it's anchored on the sides, yeah. What I'd like to do is just get uh, a little bit of solder on there. Press down here. There you go, just solder some of those corner pins, you can see that. Yeah, so we've got three pins in that corner uh, anchored now. It's pretty, it's pretty easy, it really is. The, the flux really helps though. Uh, and then of course, it's gonna go in the ultrasonic anyway, so um, I don't really need to press here now, but yeah, it's going to go in the ultrasonic. Anyway, you get the idea. I'll report back when I'm done. Yeah, it's a good idea to get this on here anyway. We don't know whether the FBU is going to work, do we? You know, if the CPU got over voltaged or something like that, what's to say that 7.4? 174 isn't balked. Right, I'm just going to inspect it and then get an FPU in there. Yeah, it's pretty dry in there. Well, I'm just cutting off those little uh, wee bits there. There we go. Just a little bit like that. And it's got these little uh, things here that stand it off the board. Yeah, that's right. So it's got a wee bit under there like that. And I'll stick that in the middle like that. And we'll just squish it down. Yeah, so you could easily peel that off, but all that's going to do is just help the chip avoid sinking too far down. It doesn't really matter if it's not perfectly straight. So the slice is up here. Uh, that's marked 40 OK. I've tested this previously. So I'll just carefully get it into position, push it straight down like that. There we go. So let's give that a try. Right, the FPU is working, that took far longer than I expected. Yeah, I had a yellow screen for about half an hour. If I switch uh, these off, uh, on, I'll show you. Let's just do uh, F and math. So this is flow point math without the FPU. Yeah, that took ages. So you can see there, we're between 3.4 and 5.1. If we say, for argument's sake, 
it's almost at 5.1 and then if I put these back on and uh, we do the same you know, it's that one isn't it the same thing F math it should come back fairly uh, a bit quicker there we go it did do and look at that now 21.5 so yeah it's working and you can see uh, FPU clock down there 25 megahertz it's just got the jumper set to use the uh, processor clock speed but you could fit an external crystal so if I get the wrist strap on and switch this off I'll just show you what's just took me half an hour to blooming well fix uh, and I wasn't thinking ahead well we fitted this socket yeah but there was some corrosion here so I blocked three wires there through to that side and as I heated them this stank yeah I could smell electrolyte so that was a clue so yeah the final thing now is to get this cap on secure these caps with a bit of uh, glue these ones aren't too bad actually I think I'll probably see, nah, they're all right. This one is going to need to secure with some glue, and I will secure that one because that one was like just a wire, wasn't it? I honestly can't remember. It's that long ago since I did that. And get the one ohm on there. Uh, but yeah, I just managed to avoid touching the socket there. You can see if you look at the bottom of it, there's a little mark where I just touched the very, very edge there. But yeah, I had to do that to get to those uh, three uh, wires there. Pain in the, uh, you know what? Anyway, at least it's working. So here's the other CPU card I have here, uh, that's got an FPU on there, tested at 40, it's got the original CPU here, so this is the one that came in my cased 4000, I'll stick a link to that video up there. Um, yeah, so I was looking at the resistor on here, and I think it's marked R204, and looking at the schematics, I can't really see very well here, this, the print is really fine, it looks like um, that says R204, but it might be 284, I don't know, the print is really small, you'll be able to see that better than me, but it says unused. This is unused, so I don't know, and it's on the 030BG line, but it might not be unused because it was fitted, so I don't know. I mean, the thing is here, there's jumpers, and you can see that here. There's some jumper positions, and I think some of the stuff up here is dependent on if you've got the 020, yeah, you know, and then you'd have the um, uh, uh, gal here, you know, uh, a PAL originally probably. Um, there's obviously the FPU crystal if you want, uh, you know, the asynchronous clock there. Anyway, so I'm not really sure that that resistor had any bearing on the uh, original faults, but it was interesting that that was open circuit. And whilst we're here, I'll just cover a few things. So the jumpers, you know, these are jumpers, jumpers, jumpers. And it says 030 select, 020 select, and then it says 020 slash 030 select. So, yeah, those uh, jumpers there do need to be set under certain circumstances, but as you can see on this other one here, they're not, there's nothing there. Um, obviously got the 030 CPU here, quad flat pack, and the uh, 020 you know, QFP, you know, because as I say, the 020, because as I say, the 020 is what can go there. Um, yeah, and on the next page here, so we've got the uh, the PAL slash gal there, it's SPLCC, that's what that is. Um, and then we've got, the, I think, the 7474 here, yeah, 74F74. There's an input there, you've got clock 030 exp, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is stuff to do with clocking and BGAC by the looks of things. Got a couple of address bits going there. Probably, and it says remap. There's probably something to do with the uh, ROM mapping. You can't you do fast ROM or something with these as a jumper? I forget. I'm probably confusing myself with the 040 card. Um, and then you've got the two types of FPU because obviously this board supports the PLCC variant or the um, uh, PGA pin grid array. Uh, and then obviously the Kel connector there with the pinouts for that, but yeah, it's, it can be quite hard following the schematics here to you know to make sense of that. And one of the problems I had early on with this, you know, if this was any other sort of uh, motherboard or something, it'd be easy to scope things and probe things. But because this goes upside down like that, you're really at the mercy of trying to probe the Kel connector here. It's really awkward trying to work out which pin correspond. Well, you can see that there, so maybe it's not as hard as I'm thinking. But it's pretty hard trying to probe these things to work out what's going on. But my guess is is based on, I mean, the connectivity test I did, that's the other thing. I went around that, the chip we took off, and I tested every single pin looking for, you know, against the uh, pin out, looking for low resistance between ground or VCC, see if I could see any shorts with, but I couldn't see anything. So it may well be that it just failed internally in 
some way one of the registers might have balked on it or something like that but it didn't seem like any particular uh, pin on it had short to ground or VCC incorrectly so I'm talking about you know all the address the bus the data bus all of these control signals and the control signals that go to this they all seemed fine so yeah it's a really weird one and as I said earlier on if you've got a dip 68,000 one of these uh, bad boys these seem bulletproof you can stick these in the socket the wrong way around and they survive yeah I, I don't think I've ever seen one of these falter yet yeah so yeah this these the quad flat pack ones seem uh, less uh, forgiving because I think Stefan's looked at a few of these cards and he's found a few where the, the CPUs are the cause so I mean ultimately what would cause that well it's probably corrosion on the motherboard you get corrosion on the motherboard you know corrosion on this connector here and stuff well it's just a matter of time before something uh, like uh, a CPU there dies as a result of that and it could just be the uh, electrolyte around here that caused a failure on this you know some electrolyte getting around a pin here could cause the uh, CPU to fail there but uh, when it came to me I think Stefan may have swapped it already I'm not sure it could just be that it cleaned up and reflowed and it did look really clean around it I can't wait to tidy up I've got stuff all over here let's just get rid of this bit of wire there we go we'll get a one ohm resistor on there yeah if your brain doesn't absorb and most and most of the time it won't just add a bit of flux yeah so I've got some SMD resistors here let's just see if we can find yeah, those are 1 ohm, and if you look at the pad size, that'll fit quite nicely there, so let's just uh, peel that back. I'll have one of those on there, and it's upside down. I said this the other day, whenever I'm building something and getting these components out, and I'll have one on a board, they always, always, always go upside down. It's like there's a 50-50 chance of it landing the right way up, it never does. It never does, and then sometimes I'll pick it up, put it back on the board, and it still lands up the upside down way. Maybe it's not a 50-50, maybe the uh, print makes it uneven and that, that's why it nearly always ends up upside down, I don't know. That sounds like a video, doesn't it? I should do research or flip some SMD components a thousand times and see how many times it lands the right way up. Yeah, so this is typically where I'll use magnification because uh, it might tombstone here, it might move. Yeah, you go, see it's moved. <sighs> this is the thing so you can either use this end of the solder to move it but then the solder may melt so yeah more often than not I'll just use a little tool until it gets straight like that uh, yeah that'll do and it's pretty darned straight on there I just had a bit there yeah I'm not sure you could see that but yeah that's now a resistor not a piece of wire and to be fair there probably isn't much difference although there may well be actually that wire that may handle an amp or more a tiny tiny piece of wire whereas that is going to be like an eighth of a watt isn't it that size you tend to find it's like you can get them quarter of a watt i think mind you not that size maybe i think it's eighth of a watt or sixteenth of a watt that um and that's the thing it could well be at one ohm it could be a safety feature right i'm going to mount this this way around because the wires up here mean the cap can't sit on the board and the trace coming down that i need to join on here is so uh, tiny and it's so thin there's nothing here visible if the cap's there you can't get access to it at all you'd have to solder a wire onto the actual top of the chip or onto the edge of the one of the pins or something like that it'll just get messy but what we can do is to secure it like so with some hot glue between the socket and the cap yeah so i'm just going to try and coming down here and solder this one uh, part here let's just try and bend the solder a bit it may move I'm to just adjust this with magnification there we go that's in place I'm just going to just press it down just make sure it's flat there we go got a little bead there as you can see what I need to do now see this little trace I need to join something to that curl it around here and join it on here Right, that was uh, an absolute pain. It has been a bit of a painful repair, this. So you can see the wire is a bit bare here, at the top. It's just going on that trace, and then it's to just move the cap here a little bit around. Anyway, I'm just going to toothbrush around that, and then we'll get the hot glue on. So even though that wire is slightly bare, and it's near the, the wires, you know, because that's the thing, you could short the, the 5 volts or ground, whichever it is, I'm not sure. Uh, it's the five volts, isn't it? I think. Yeah, you could short them to probably a, an address or data bus connection there, but it's going to have some glue over it. It's going to be uh, submerged completely in hot melt glue. So I'm just trying to get right down there. 
because those layers haven't really had a clean on this side this way. I need to be gentle. It might be an idea to stick this in the ultrasonic before I do this, because then the hot melt glue is going to fall off, isn't it? Right. Yeah, that's not too bad. So yeah, it's still joined up. Still joined up there. Uh, let's get the glue on. So exactly the same technique we used on Andy's uh, A3640, which is to cut a piece of uh, glue like this. You may need a few of these, and actually just to sort of wedge it like that and get to actually with a small piece here. Wedge it. Where's the other one gone? Oh, there we go. Yeah, sorry, they're all moving around here. Let's just try and... Yeah, wedge that there, like that. And then if we get the hot air, just melt into this this way, first of all. Let's just hold that bit. Starting to melt there, uh, to melt the top part. So I may just stick some more around that as well, I think. But you can see, you know, what we've done there is just create like a, a join between, between the socket and there and over the wires and wires and things. Yeah, I wasn't trying to be poetic there, but <laughs> that's the way it worked out. Yeah, I think I'd feel a bit happier if there was a bit down here, maybe. That'll do, I think. It's never going to be a Picasso, this. It really is just about giving it a bit of security there. So, yeah, that uh, trail we can pull off in a sec. Yeah, the main thing is once that dries, that cap will just be a little bit more resilient to knocks. Pretty much it, really. I just want it to just go kind of round the can like that. That will do. Just because uh, that one was sheared off, and uh, I did the same over here on this one because this one was sheared off. That one's pretty good, actually. It's got a fixed wire there for the trace, but uh, yeah, anyway. I also cleaned up a few solder points here. I cleaned the solder point on that and leveled that cap off. It was a bit wonky, and uh, added a bit more to one of the wires that goes through onto the underside here. So I think that concludes my work here. And there we go, so uh, I marked it fixed 2022, and uh, yeah, it's come out really clean. I'm really pleased with how well that's come out. Uh, so we uh, plugged three wires here under the FPU. That was why the FPU was giving me a yellow screen, uh, but we had to glue these, obviously, and we had to use little eyelets, you know, a little bits of wire coming out there to fix the uh, missing pads on these three. Uh, this one here wasn't too bad, but we had to fix trace there with a piece of cane art through the via and onto the trace. Um, that cap is secured okay though. And obviously the CPU had died, so uh, yeah, very interesting. Uh, and obviously I've and I fitted the, uh, the FPU socket there uh, as well. So uh, yeah, very pleased. Thank you ever so much to Stefan. He's allowed me to keep this, so uh, yeah, I keep this in my collection as a spare. It's uh, always handy to have a spare 030 board. I do hope you found the video interesting. Please like, share and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, please do the coffee, Patreon and merch. Links down below, t-shirts and mugs and stuff. Every uh, dollar just makes uh, things like this possible and allows the channel to keep going. So thank you ever so much for your support. I'll catch you in the next video.